Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and don't forget to share the link and the video actually. Um, share the link now and download the video later so you can help some people to learn more. Today our topic is about salvation, which is a very important topic for all of us. Because the whole idea of belief, whatever the belief is, is to be saved. And uh, Muslims, they have tons of articles speaking about salvation. Actually, um, this is like something is unusual to hear somebody is a Muslim speaking of salvation because the Quran does not really even mention that word. Salvation. That is something they stole from Christianity and try to, let us say, uh, to make it or to insert it inside Islam. And this is an article, this is the website, is called The D Show, and I think many of you heard of it, which is a very funny show, funny in the way of stupidity and fabrication. And those who they are on the TV, they don't know even what they are talking about. And I will prove it to you. When you are in supposedly claiming to be an official TV station presenting Islam, and then you put an article like this. It doesn't matter who wrote the article. The second you allow it to be in your website, it's mean you approve it. In the front of us, it says, Islam teach that salvation is attainable through the worship of God alone. And we will show you that this is a big, big, big false statement. A person must believe in God and follow his commands. That is a big, big, big false statement. This is the same message, message the, uh, through the prophets, Moses and Jesus and blah, 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 blah. Take notes. I just said this is a big false statement. And then, in addition additional to this, Islam teach us that a human being are born without sin. That a big, big, big false message Islam teach totally the opposite. So you see here, like we did not even start and we find that everything here is just a lie. So either those who they are claiming to teach us about Islam, they do not know what they are talking about or they are liars. You choose one. They grow their beard and they bring us a guy and supposedly he is a, a who converted to Islam. He went to Saudi Arabia. He became himself, he called himself useless, uh, sorry, Yusuf, Yusuf, uh, Yusuf State. I mean, the, the beard is long, but the word is stupid because this is not Islamic and far away from Islam. In a Christianity and in Islam, <clears throat> we have nothing to share. Absolutely. You see, the Muslim, they put the name of Moses and the name of Jesus. This is when a scam come to you. Let us say I'm a thief. I want to go inside your house. What I will say, I'm say I'm going to, I'm the guy from the cable company which you approve, so I can get in. So I wear a uniform of the cable company, so I earn your trust, so I can get inside your house. And this is exactly what Islam does by saying names like Moses, Jesus, Abraham. It's just a uniform, but the inside have nothing to do with the outside uniform. So. What is salvation first? You see, uh, the Bible is so clear. When in the book of Acts, if you go to Acts 16, you will see they ask uh, uh, like uh, um, a person asking, so I, how I can be saved? Who can save me? Where, the, where is salvation is going to come from? You know, the answer was very simple, is to believe in the Messiah. And we Christians, when we speak to non-Christians, uh, we speak to them the same way we speak to Christians. And I will make it simple for you. How many of you say to somebody is not a Christian, we are saved by the blood of Jesus? We say that, right? We, we are saved by the blood of Jesus. Now this guy, he did not know what this person is talking about. What the blood of Jesus? What do you mean? So Christians, because they are not really, uh, let us say, they are not the same as the apostles who used to go and preach and teach. Let us say they have zero expertise to speak about uh, or to preach. They throw things like copy-paste. I heard it. I say it. But why I said it and how I should say it, it doesn't matter. I just take it and throw it at him, and that's it. Before you mention the sentence that you are saved by the blood of Jesus, 
you have to tell the person first what does that mean otherwise he might think that you are a person who believe that you are maybe a maybe a zombie uh, maybe a person who believes he's a maybe a criminal what blood are you talking about read the blood the blood really uh, okay how how we will explain that to him so all Christians they always repeat the same thing without noticing that there is some time we say things but in the not in the right spot or the right place it's like somebody you know uh, what Christians do is like somebody watching a movie and tell you the end of the story without telling you what the movie is the end you know he just told you the end but you did not tell him the story yet you know what I mean we have to tell the story so he can understand the end not from the first sentence we speak to him we says you are saved by the blood of Jesus and the Muslims now they've been taught wrongly and those who knew they lie to add to each other they lie to the Muslims too using the Christian statement to say by the blood of Jesus so what the Muslim they believe now that the Christians they can go and do whatever they want uh, you know they can sleep around they can do drugs they can do all kind of things <clears throat> and they are saved that's it they are, he, he, he saved by the blood of Jesus my friend that is absolutely false statement when we say we are saved by the flood, blood of Jesus that's true but in the same time it doesn't mean I have a license to sin it doesn't mean I have a license to kill it doesn't mean I have a license to do whatever I want because I'm just I'm saved no I'm not saved because Jesus is the same person who said not everyone says to me Lord Lord he will go they say we believe in you as Lord not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will <laughs> and I I want uh, uh, I want people to remember this verse because this is very important for you as a Christian saying Lord Lord as we see it in Matthew will not make you Christian and will not make you saved by the blood of Jesus because you don't deserve it so what Jesus is speaking about that I am saving you there's people who belong to him and those people will be saved not people they say to him Lord Lord saying the word Lord Lord from now until tomorrow saying I believe in Jesus from now until the coming century will not change the fact that still you don't belong to him because you are not doing his will not only that actually Jesus will say to you I never know you who are you not everyone says to me Lord Lord God God and the Muslim they say to us where Jesus said I'm God shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who uh, does the will of my father so the blood of Jesus will save me but the conditions is still there Do you understand if you are a Muslim or a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddha please listen carefully so believing in Jesus does not save you yet because your belief in order to be true it have to be followed by a true belief act so there is a belief and there is a true belief I believe that Jesus is really great person okay still I believe that Jesus is God but I'm going to do whatever I want I mean obviously you don't believe because the one you believe in he said to you it's not by saying Lord Lord you believe in me but by doing the will of my father which means everything I taught you to not to do or to do is the condition many they will say to me in that day which day the day of judgment Lord Lord have we not prophesied in your name uh, there is many priests and churches uh, God and they wave their hands but maybe the first they are the first to go to hell because you know they are not really true believers many of them they are doing business cast out demon in your name which means they are using 
the, his name his holy name to earn power for their own glory and done many wonders in your name and then I will declare to them I never know you depart away from me once a Muslim he says to me see if you say to Jesus Lord Lord Jesus will say to you deny I deny you this is not what the verse is saying this is Abdul explanation Jesus said not everyone which mean many they will say few will be from this side and a few from will be from that side or let us say a number from that side a number from this side a number of those who say lord lord they are truthful and they will go to heaven so not everyone who says to me lord lord which means the one who will go to heaven necessarily is going to be from those who say lord lord not from outside he will not be a muslim he will not be a hindu he will not be a buddha he will not be a mormon he will not be jehovah's witnesses he will be a person who is a Christian who says, Lord, Lord, and yet he practice the commands of the Lord. Now, all of us, we knew that we are sinners. So how we practice the command of the Lord? The Lord, he says, be holy, but doesn't mean we are holy. It is something you work in to fight your sin. So it's a project. It is, it's a mission of life. Every person, the Bible confirm, shall bear the sin of his own burden, or let us say, uh, he will carry his burden, his sin. So you are responsible for your sin. And that responsibility will never go. Still you are responsible. So if you commit sin and you became a Christian and you believe in Jesus, you will be forgiven, but doesn't mean you don't have, you did not do the sin, you did the sin. And look what happened here. The person, the same as what happened to Adam, the same as what happened to you, the same will happen to me. Adam was out or kicked out of heaven for his or disobey God. And kicked out from heaven, that's mean what exactly? Is it really about a fruit and tree? No, it's about death. So Adam's supposed to live in a place where the death is not exist. This is what heaven is about eternal life no sickness no sadness no suffering so because he sinned he was sent out so sin brought death sin brought that the mercy of god taken away from you you don't deserve it you are by yourself however the bible confirm <clears throat> that if we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us to forgive our sin so the lord he gave us a chance and the chance is very simple you believe in me you confess your sin and you make a promise that you will do your best to fight the sin you just did And I will cleanse you so the blood of Jesus is not just a, it's not a shower you take and your sin is gone it is you working and he is giving your hand to you knock at the door and I will open for you this is what Jesus said so you have to knock at his door otherwise the door will not open by itself you have to come to him, you ask for forgiveness, and you confess your sin, which means you are being truthful. This is what confess sin mean. Confess sin mean, I am not proud of me being a sinner, but I'm brave enough to say, I did this, and this is why I'm asking for forgiveness. Because confessing sin needs a lot of a bravery. A lot of a bravery. It's very easy to deny and to lie. Because people, they will throw rocks at you. People will de deny you. People will make fun of you. People will spit on you for the sin you did. If you don't confess it, nobody knows. They think you are the perfect person, maybe. So you confess your sin, and then you ask for forgiveness. If we go in Matthew, those are the disciples of Jesus, and they are with him. 
And if the disciples of Jesus are not going to be saved, who is going to be saved? Yet they ask him how to pray. So if they are saved automatically, why do they need to pray? Do you understand me? This is expose all the lies those who claim to be uh, religious of Islam, the cleric, the long beard, expose all their lies that we Christians, we claim that we are saved automatically just by saying we believe in Jesus, just by wearing a cross. Here we go, we have the disciple of Jesus, who they are the most close people to Christ, and he is teaching them how to pray. Pray for what? For forgiveness. Asking our Father to give us our daily blood, daily bread, and forgive us the same as we forgive to others. And here Christ, he made it very clear that a Christian person, he don't deserve to be forgiven unless he forgive. And that is so beautiful of Christ's teaching. In Islam, you do not need to forgive anyone to be forgiven. You just ask God to forgive you. And actually, the Islam teach the opposite. And I will show you that. So forgive to us our sin as we forgive to others. So in order to earn forgiveness of a Christ and salvation, you have to be a person who is a person of a quality. What, what kind of a quality is that? You, you, you are just asking for forgiveness. I mean, obviously, you are a sinner. So there's no quality on you. No, you have a quality. The quality of forgiving those who did harm to you. And by forgiving them, you are forgiven. Do you see the beautiful justice? So you ask God to forgive you, but you don't forgive others. So I want to forgive you. You did wrong. The same as did wrong. They did wrong to you. Or you did wrong to me. So you don't want to forgive them, but you're asking me to forgive you. This is double standard and hypocrisy. So I want you to come to me clean. From all the hate in your heart. Forgive to them. And then you can ask me for forgiving to you. And we pray to the Lord to protect us from the evil and from the sin. And here that explain what the blood of Jesus means. The blood of Jesus saved me. That means it changed my life. He made me a person who fight hatred. Like I love Muslims. I don't hate them and I would never hate them. He made me a person who is willing to see the truth. That's why Jesus said, don't take an oath. Don't take a, don't, don't swear by God. Just say, yeah, yeah, or nay, nay. For anything additional is from the devil. We don't have people who lie. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So doing the will of the father is the condition. Forgiving others is condition. Being truthful is condition. Confession your sin is con con condition. But the most important condition is to believe and the rest will come automatically. What does that mean? The Bible says that faith without fruits is a, is a dead faith. Faith without fruits is a dead faith. So it's not your it's not your deed will save you in Christianity, no. But if you don't have deeds, it's mean you are a fake person. If you are a Christian but you don't forgive, that's mean you are a fake Christian. If you are a Christian, as you claim, but yet you want to kill people, your, your hate is so strong, but yet you claim to be Christians, that's mean you are not. So the conditions of a Christ is there. And we believing in Christ doesn't mean that we are saved automatically. Unless he said, he, he said to you, I forgive you. You earn the forgiveness. But how you earn the forgiveness? There is a long way to go. So when the Muslim, they say Christians believe that, okay, Jesus died for us, so we will go in heaven. No, that's not true. We don't believe in that. We believe that Jesus died for us, and Jesus, he did everything for us to save us. And his death is one of the things he did. Coming down to this earth is a big thing too. He, he took, you know, he took our suffering. He took... Uh, the shape of the, he took he took the look of a man he humbled himself jesus is the visible image of the invisible god 
for God he humbled himself this is what the Bible says so for believing in Jesus and whatever Jesus did and the top of it was going in the cross and even Jesus in the cross when he was in the cross he said forgive them father they do not know what they are doing and look how amazing the Christ is imagine Jesus saying to us well forgive to us pray like this forgive us for our sin and you know forgive as the same as we forgive to others but yet he himself would not practice it that will make him hypocrite he is in the cross he is in the form of a man he is suffering like a human being as any human being he is not using his power of God to you know to show you what I can do he is just humble person in this in the cross suffering bleeding dying yet he is worried about those who just killing him in the moment saying forgive them father so in order to be forgiven there's many conditions in Christianity not as Muslims they claim or they try to make it look like which is false now I think we're done with explanation about salvation for sure the topic can be really we can go forever talking about this but we just make it short so we can go now to Islam so summary of a Christianity that salvation is a through Jesus only because he said I am the way I am the truth I am the life I am the resurrection I am the Alpha I am the Omega that is Jesus my friend and yet the Muslim they say to you I challenge you brother I challenge you to show me where Jesus said I'm God and the worth of me I mean all of those Jesus saying I'm God and yet the Muslim Abdul he will say to you show me where Jesus said I'm God worship me what a comedy it's like somebody he put you know like uh, uh, a lot of concrete in his ears and he go and he starts to speak to you he says are you talking show me where Jesus says I'm God worship me and they say you read from the verse he says I did not hear you show me where Jesus says I'm you know copy paste nobody want to read read the Bible each time Jesus says I am that's mean he is God for this is how God he present himself he said I am now we go to Islam and in Islam we will find madness in the article we go back to zero Islam teaches that uh, salvation is attainable through the worship of God that's very funny I mean uh, salvation is a through worshiping of God uh, are you sure well let us see I don't know I'm, I'm going I'm going to see if this is true this is a hadith and the Muslim translation is false so I have to translate it I have to correct the translation it says here قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم let us click at the hadith hadith means speech for those who do not know in Arabic قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس أحد منكم ينجيه عمله what does that mean the messenger of Allah Allah pray on him and salute him he said none of you his deed will save him none of you what his deed will save him Look at the Muslim translation. There is none amongst you who is deed alone. Where is the word alone coming from? It's not in Arabic. That is the fabrication of the translator. And I changed any Muslim who speak Arabic to show me where the word alone is coming from. We can take it to Google translation and we can show you there is no alone. So Muhammad confirmed that your deed will not save you so what will save you they said to him Allah messenger not you not even you he said not even I but uh, uh, and here they are here again the transition is false not even I but Allah wars me with his mercy but the fact is not he's saying Wala ana illa an yatagamadani Allahu bi rahmati so he's saying even I unless not as he the translated unless Allah he 
warp me with his forgiveness here they are making it as Allah he grant him mercy, uh, forgiveness no no and we can prove that from the Quran actually so the Muslim they will say they will not say okay well this is a hadith this is a uh, we can go to the Quran <clears throat> Chapter 48, verse number 2. This is Quran. That Allah may forgive thee. And by the way, here it says fault. The fact it's a false translation. Just to show you how they lie when they translate. That's why we cannot you know, translate, uh, uh, trust any Islamic translation. If we change just between, those are Muslims. All of them they are Muslims. We change it from translator to translator. Here, look what happened. That Allah may give forgive thee the sin which in the past took and the one to come. That Allah may forgive thee. And this is a proof that the Quran is written by a person who is not Allah. Because if Allah is talking, do he forgive Muhammad or not? I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean maybe? Because the second you say that Allah may, it's mean maybe, correct? Jesus, when he spoke to the sinner, he says, go, he's hit to the Jews. Which one is easier to say to him, carry your bed and walk or to, uh, to uh, 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 your sin is forgiven or to say to him, carry your bed and walk? Which one is easier? And this is the Jew. This is why the Jews, they wanted to kill him because this guy is forgiving sin. Who is this guy? This is a man. He's a normal human being. He's forgiving sin. How you can do that? He's claiming to be God. So here you see that even Allah, he have no guarantee to forgive sin. And we are talking about Muhammad, which the Muslim claim that he is the best of mankind. Maybe. Obviously, Muhammad, when he wrote this verse, he forgot to change the fabrication of it to make it like Allah grant him forgiveness. And he added the word may, so it looks stupid. Same time. When Muhammad he says that deeds will not forgive anyone's sin, will not attend him his, uh, or let us say, will not give him salvation. So what, uh, what, what give you salvation? Islam is a religion of contradictions. As an example, in the beginning of Islam, Muhammad he promised everybody salvation. Jews, Christians, even those who worship the stars, Sabians, Lou, those who believe. In what revealed to Muhammad and those who they were Jews and those who they are Christians and those who they are Sabian and whoever believe in Allah all of them they have no they will go to heaven and they have no grief so who's left at that time those are the three major religions exist Muhammad promising everybody to go to heaven or even those who they are Sabian who worship stars why Muhammad worship? Why Muhammad saying to those who are Sabian, you will go to heaven? What does that mean? In different place, he says the Christians they will go to hell. In different place, he says the, the Jews will go to hell. Why? Because in the beginning, Muhammad he is the same as like Obama or Trump or any of those who go in politics. In the beginning, he say whatever people the crowd like to hear, so nobody will go against him. Obama, he's a gay with the gay, he's a Christian with the Christian, he is a atheist with the atheist, he's a Muslim with the Muslims. He's a, you know, I mean, they are, they, they change their, uh, because they are fake people. And this is exactly what Muhammad is. So, how we can earn salvation in Islam? If my deed will not save me, if Muhammad himself, he don't, he's not sure, he will go to heaven. In fact, there is no such an idea in Islam, and I will prove it to you, word by word. If we go in the Quran, chapter thirty-five, verse number eighteen, it says that no one will carry the bear; the, he will bear the, the the burden of someone else. This is what the meaning is. No one will carry the sin of somebody else. This is exactly what we see in Galatians 
chapter 6 for every man shall bear his own burden Muhammad is trying to copy it you will not you will not bear the sin of other uh, other person even if he's your son okay you know I agree with that you should not bear the burden of somebody else but is that true is that true what the Muslims believe I will show you this is not true Muhammad is a person who have a suffering from flight of thoughts and he because he's a false prophet he contradict himself non-stop first of all how sin happened in Islam how sin happened in Islam maybe you do not know that sin in Islam is not a decision you take it is a decision Allah he take how many of you understand that in Islam you do sin because Allah he planned for you to do sin it is Allah decision it's not yours which mean you like to do sin you don't like to do sin it doesn't matter Allah he already wrote for you a destiny and it is a fate do you understand me so this is stupid I mean what do you mean uh, nobody will carry the sin of somebody else if you are the one who forced them to do sin <laughs> I mean isn't it stupid and now somebody might say uh, okay what is the proof of what you just said that uh, Allah is the one who made people do sin uh, huh? take notes download the video please after we finish so you can make your article about it in chapter 6 verse number 107 Allah said if it had Allah been a plan they would not have been taking false God The, everything is the plan of Allah uh, but Muhammad <laughs> he forgot himself what he said here in different verse he says the following no soul can believe except by the will of Allah <laughs> do you see it so in order to believe it's not your will it's the will of Allah so if somebody convert to Islam it's not it's not he converting to Islam it is the will no soul can believe do you see it except by the will of Allah is that a comedy show so who is the one is stopping us from believing in Allah and this is a chapter 10 verse 100 Allah because he is in charge anyone don't understand what I'm saying this is a madness cult it's literally a madness and look uh, in the verse before it he says if Allah want he made all the believer believers no one no one no soul can believe except by the will of Allah so this is confirmed that the one who believe already in Allah it was Allah will and the one who don't believe in Allah it was Allah will so why you want to punish me for your will are you an idiot do you understand me so Allah will punish you for doing his will <laughs> what a comedy in different verse in the Quran we find this those who uh, take partner with Allah worship other gods will say if Allah had wished we should not have given partners to him okay nor would our fathers nor should we have had any tapus and then Allah he says to them ah, hold on hold on hold on they are following nothing but they're false falsely this, this is a false statement but isn't it you who says if Allah will they will not became disbelievers we just saw the verse before it do you see it is it you who said this in chapter 6 verse number 107 The one who wrote the Quran is very high with a lot of hashish. And by the way, hashish is an Arabic word in case you do not know. Huh? 
right? Do you see the contradiction? It's Allah plan. لو شاء الله ما أشركوا ولو شاء الله ما أشركوا if Allah will they will not take partners. Right? So why you are saying that those who say such a thing they are making false statement? Those who says if Allah will we will not take partners. And Islam teach that everything by the will of Allah, isn't it? No soul can believe. Believe in what? In anything. Any belief you have, except by the will of Allah. So you are a person believing in Hinduism? Okay, by the will of Allah. You believe you are an atheist? By the will of Allah. You are a Christian? By the will of Allah. You are a Hindu? You are anything. Until now, we did not understand anything from this cult. So believe or not to believe, who is the one responsible for this? Let us continue the comedy. <clears throat> How many times you heard the Muslims saying that the Arab used to kill their children? How many of you heard that before? That and Muhammad, he came and he forbid them. I mean, this is a comedy, my friend. They, they say that for those who they have no knowledge. Look at this. Even so, in the eyes of the most pagans, their partners made a learning, slaughtering of their children. By the way, this is a false statement. There's no no Arab. You know, they say that the Arab they used to kill their babies, uh, the, the female. But hold on. If this is true, that's mean where my mother is coming from. We are out of women, my friend. You know what I mean? If, if the Arab, they are killing their female girls, so where Muhammad is coming from? Did, did the father of Muhammad kill any of his female babies? Or the grandfather? or Nobody. We never heard of this before. What is that? However, let us go with the lie. Look what the verse is saying. Even though in the, mo in the eyes of the most pagans, their partners made a luring slaughter of their children in order to let them in their own destruction and then and cause confusion in their religion if Allah had willed they would not have done so <laughs> do you see it that's mean Allah is the one who made them kill their babies who is the one who made them kill their babies Allah this is the will of Allah so when somebody do something ugly, it's the will of Allah still. So why they are bad? Let us continue with this comedy. Allah, he appointed for every messenger, evil and devils. Translation here is false. It doesn't say evil. It says let us change the translation so we can see the stupidity of this verse <clears throat> let us go to a different one and we have appointed for every prophet's enemies shayateen devil among mankind and gen. Okay, hold on. Guys, do you see the word mankind? Do you see the word mankind? Do we see it? Okay. Who is the one appointing bad evil ones? He Allah, he, uh, he is even naming them as shaitan. Allah. To do what? To do bad. So right now, according to Muhammad, according to Muslim, I'm a shaitan because shaitan can be a genie and can be a human, which is very funny. Because in different verse, it says that shaitan is a genie and genie is not a human being. So shayateen from among the mankind and the jinn. Okay, so now the one who is harming the prophet is a shaitan appointed by Allah. 
So if I am now harming the Prophet by exposing his lies, according to the Quran, I am hired by Allah. Do you understand me? Have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? So why you Muslims are, uh, are upset from me? Why you Muslims are upset from me? Allah hire me, don't you see? And why you are saying shaitan is evil? <laughs> shaitan is just a, shaitan is a good believer. He is doing the order of Allah. <laughs> this is a religion. And this is a prophet and this is God is talking. So all the bad ones who they are trying to harm Islam, my friend, are hired by Allah. Appointed them. It's not only like, it's not just like you, know, you are doing. No, he, he is the one we have appointed. So, okay, you appointed me to attack Muhammad. So am I going to go to hell because you appointed me to attack Muhammad? If I ask Muslims now, hey, do you think Christian Prince will go to hell? He will say, yes, absolutely, brother. But okay, but Allah appointed me. This guy, not only he was taking hashish, this guy, his blood is hashish. The one who wrote the Quran. How you are the one who appointed them, and yet they are the devil. You are the devil. Because the one who appointed the devil, he must be the devil himself. Guys, if I am the one who asks you to go and do bad, and you, are, you cannot reject my orders because I am God. And I can decide your fate because most of them now they are talking about fate. Everything is fate. Okay. So who is the evil one in reality? It's Allah. Because the shaitan, he is just, he is appointed by Allah. He is an employee by Allah. He is just a poor person doing what Allah forced him to do. So based on this verse, Shaitan, he worked for Allah, and Shaitan is a good person. The bad person is Allah. You see, if you are a soldier and you kill somebody unjustly because your captain order you, the responsibility is in the captain because the army says if you don't, in the wartime, if you don't shoot, they will execute you. You have no choice. You do, you, you, you do the orders. The officer who gave the order is responsible. And who is the one who gave the order? The officer, Allah. Now, are we done yet? No. Look, the shaitan and the genie, they inspire one another to a doomed speech of delusion, deception, but they are appointed by you. <laughs> Guys, those people, they are doing what? They do deception, but they are appointed by Allah. Look at this. Are we done? No. The comedy to continue. There is tons of verses. I don't know really which one I will show you. Let us see. Mm. Allah destroy people by their sin. Yeah, this is what I want to talk about now. In the Quran, it says Allah destroy many. That is as an example, the Pharaoh. He destroyed them by their sin. But hold on. Allah is the one who make us sin, and then He will destroy us for doing sin. Maybe somebody saying, "Well, how? What is the proof that Allah is the one who made the Pharaoh do sin?" Hmm, that's a good challenge. Christian Prince now in the corner. How he can prove it? Let us see. Read with me, 
and try not to die laughing Muhammad is talking not me by him he swear in whose hands is my life if you were not to commit sin Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah and he will burden them do you see it do you see it but in the verse there about Pharaoh Allah destroyed the Pharaoh and his army because they are committing sin but Muhammad here saying if you don't commit sin Allah will kill you what is this if you don't commit sin Allah will sweep you out that's it and then he will replace you with a new human being better equality who commits sin the difference between the first commits the, the one who don't commit sin and the one who commits sin that the second group Allah will bring them because they will ask for forgiveness and here you will see the nature of the God of Islam you see in the Bible God he created Adam he don't want him to ask for forgiveness because simply he don't want him to, to do sin right Adam he have a free choice to sin or not in Islam no and I will show you that you know we don't say things without proof by him in whose my hand is my life if you were not to commit sin Allah would destroy you out of existence and he will replace you with people who commit sin and seek forgiveness Allah loves sinners but in which way why because he's the lonely God he created you to cry forgive me please forgive me that that's a joy for him and you know what this kind of illness that is that that's a that, it's actually this is have a have a name in in the medicine field but I'm not a doctor as you know the only uh, degree I have is a driver license and uh, they will take it from me soon so uh, I'm not sure what kind of God this God is he will forgive you and he will not destroy you if you commit sin and ask for forgiveness but if you don't forget commit sin he's upset he's so upset to the point he will sweep you out of the earth this is Sahih Muslim hadith number 2749 and this is the easiest way always to find something I'm showing you on the screen just type a few words like this you know like, like from here to here type it in Google you will find it but this is totally different from what the Bible teach isn't it God he destroyed uh, the people of Noah because they were committing sin <laughs> and Muhammad he told the story a Muslim will say to you oh but he did not for us for forgiveness will give them a chance to for us for forgiveness you see because if this is the excuse if this is the excuse about not asking for forgiveness well isn't it a person he have the right to live until the last second supposedly according to Islam and this is what the Quran is saying and then he asks for forgiveness because he might repent in the last moment So their excuses doesn't work and it's not it's not even it doesn't match with their logic I'm not talking about my logic their logic itself is a contradiction for their own logic because Islam does not have a logic Islam like is a like a jacuzzi you know jacuzzi like you do not know where the water is coming from bubbles and they go against each other and this is what make the bubbles you don't know what this guy is talking about so now I have a condition I have to commit sin and Allah will forgive me but hold on when I commit sin is it my decision no Muhammad he confirmed that look at this when you do adultery is it a decision you make no read carefully not my words my friend if you are a Muhammad and you are listening this is not my words respect please respect the Prophet of Allah this is the best of mankind this is the most smart intelligent person if you ask him one plus one he knew what it is 
Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge. Like what? Like what, what? But anyone notice here what is the contradiction? Anyone knows what is the contradiction? Who noticed between between the hadith we just showed you before this one and this one? Anyone notice? Let us see who of you is have a very fast processor. What is the, what is the problem between what we showed you here and let me go to the other hadith? This one. What is the, the what is the problem? Anyone notice? It's easy to criticize when cherry pick verses and eh, don't give me cherry pick for verses. This is your Quran and what cherries? Here we go. With the Quran, by the way, uh, the verses they have no connection with each other. You will see Muhammad talking suddenly about Jesus and then he speak about beating women. What does this have to do with the Quran? Is a stupid book. Have nothing. There's no connection. And you know what? I can open my sky for you and you tell me refute me. Here we go. Who want to do it? It's in the front of you. Now, look what happened here. If you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. And if you commit sin and ask for forgiveness, you're fine. But here it says that the sin you do is written by Allah. <laughs> do you see it? When you do adultery, it's not a choice you do. It's not you who uh, go after a woman and you want to have sex with her or she want to sleep with you. No, no, no. It's Allah. He decides. Allah in his book, he said, this guy, his name is Muhammad Ali Shish Kebab Falafel. I'm going to make him uh, sleep with this woman. Her name is Fatima, the, the daughter of Muhammad Ali Baba. So why you are going to punish them? Uh, why need to? Why they should ask for forgiveness? If you are the one who wrote the fix, very portion. Do you see it, guys? This is the Muslim translation, not mine. The it's a fixed. You, can, you cannot change it. What the hadith I'm showing here? We go. I will give you the link, my friend. No problem. You can click in your text, and you can open it. This is Sahih al Bukhari, hadith number two six five seven. This is very authentic. Sorry, Sahih Muslim. Sorry. So, even even something you do with your lips is written by Allah. Even something you do with your eyes is written by Allah. Even even with your feet is written by Allah. Uh, Mimi, we cannot change the topic right now. Your question does not have to do have nothing to do. So guys, please focus with me with the topic. This is a very important topic because here you notice that Islam is stupid. Okay, if we ask a Muslim, any of those who they are listening to us, what is the punishment for a woman she commit adultery in Islam and she is married, they will say we stone her to death. Okay, why you want to stone her to death? If Allah is the one who wrote the fixed portion for it, for her. Do you understand, guys? Why you want to punish her? If this is not her decision this is your prophet words and not mine and don't tell me we don't understand it. it's so clear verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man should shall will indulge in doesn't matter that's it you cannot change it so why you are punishing somebody for adultery are you stupid so Allah he forced me to do adultery and then he will punish me for he forced me And we are not done if you remember in the article which is written by the Muhammadan it says here a brother and sisters in addition to this Islam teach that a human being are born without sin Muslims are you sure are you sure okay as long as you are sure 
So how you explain to me Muhammad saying the following? A child, he is a Muslim baby, an infant. An infant. Hmm? He died. Aisha, she said, oh, Prophet of Allah, uh, this child will be a happiness for this child. He will be a bird from the birds of paradise. Hmm? He will be a bird in the heaven. Who is the one saying that, Aisha? But look, do you see the title it says? The title it says, every child is born in the state of fitra. You ask the Muslim what fitra he says born as a Muslim. What fitra mean they say to you Muslim? He's born as a Muslim. Okay. As long as a person, he is even a child of, of non-Muslims, he is born as a Muslim. So why this child he might go to hell? Read carefully. Aisha, the mother of the believer, said that Allah Messenger was called in the, uh, to lead the funeral of a prayer of a child, of an Ansar. And I said, Allah Messenger, there is a happiness for this child who have uh, who is a bird from the uh, uh, birds of paradise, for he commit, commit no sin, nor has reached the age when one commits sin. So it's confirmed that this is a very baby child who never did anything wrong except doing poop on his diaper. He said, Muhammad, Aisha, peradventure, it might be the otherwise. Did you see it, guys? It might be the otherwise. Okay, how, hold on. In the article, they say to us, everyone is born without sin. Aisha, she said, this bird, this, this child, he will be a bird of bird of paradise because he never commits sin. Okay, so why Allah? Look, look at this. Let me show you what this Abdul is saying here. Hold on. I will show you what uh, justice he said, just to show you the confusion and the, the low IQ. The Arabian Prophet, since Allah, he knew the future, so he write what would happen in the future. My, my friend, this is a baby and he died. What a future. <laughs> This guy is a baby. Do you know what baby mean? Do you know what a baby mean? He knew the future. Secondly, just to show you how, how stupid your answer is, it says here that Allah, he wrote for you, the adultery you will indulge. This is not about knowing. Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery. This is not about knowing what you will do. This is about you shall do. Do you see it? This is not about knowing. And in the case of the child, Allah knew the future. What the future? This is a baby. He died. That's it. Why he will go to hell? Why Muhammad, he says, it might be the otherwise, which means he will go to hell. Why he will go to hell? That would lead us that in Islam there is no salvation because you might be a baby who never commit a sin, yet you might go to hell. Why? Because Muhammad, he wrote, he said that Allah, he wrote who? The fate, the destiny of those who will go to paradise when they are in the backbone of their father because Muhammad, he teach in the Quran that sperm of the man came in from the backbone. And by the way, this is true. I'm an Arab. We don't have testicles. We have backbone only. Yeah, mm, true story. This is another, this is a different story about the stupidity of the one who wrote the Quran, who believed that sperm of the man came in from the backbone. Yeah, all of us, we are Arab. We don't have uh, testicles. We don't, no. It's work. Everything, everything is done in the backbone. This is why I put insurance over my backbone. So here, it is written for you what, where you will go when you are a sperm in the backbone of your father according to Muhammad. This person did not commit sin. He's just a baby, infant. What do you mean he might go to hell? Why? Do you understand me, guys? 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Are we thinking together? Look what uh, Mr. Justice is trying to answer here. Hold on. Uh, I mean, their answer is, is more horrible than Muhammad saying their things. Arabian Prophet, I replied to your previous point about the child and not a baby. Muhammad taught Aisha not to play God and give verdict of hell and paradise. Hold on, hold on. First of all, it is a baby who never commits sin, never reached the age of sin. Don't you see? Hmm? This is why Aisha, she called him a bird. He is very little, little tiny. He never reached the age of sin. And obviously he can't even talk. Secondly, when you say he is telling Aisha not to play God, but Muhammad, he played God already. He said it's already written where he will go when he was a sperm in the backbone of his father. How Muhammad, he knew that. Where it says that in the Quran. Where it says that you are going to go to hell or heaven written before you are born. And this person did not commit sin anyway. So you tell me why. So when a Muslim he tried to explain, he make it more worse from before the explanation. And just to get you more busted, let us go to different hadith. But now don't don't cry because this will hurt. This is really will hurt. Look at this one. We Christian we speak about the original sin, which is the sin of Adam. But the original sin does not mean that only Adam don't sin. I did sin too, and this is why, you know, we are still not in heaven. <laughs> it's not because just Adam did commit sin. So look what Muhammad he said. That there was a debate between Moses and Adam. And Moses he blamed Adam for being kicked out of heaven all mankind is kicked out of heaven because of you as you see this is very authentic story and no muslim can deny it. this is sahir bukhari in front of me so uh, musa he said to adam and this muhammad talking the prophet said adam and musa by the way how adam and musa they met anyone can tell me is that a fiction story muhammad is making up in his uh, in his nose because as i know Adam was not exist in the time of Moses, as I know. Ag argued, Adam and Moses argued with each other. Look at this, this. Moses and Adam, they met in a Starbucks. And now they are fighting. Moses says to Adam, Adam, you are the one, our father, who disappoint us and turned us away from paradise. Adam, he said to him, Oh, Moses. Allah had forced you would talk to you directly and favor you and he wrote the Torah for you. Do you blame me? Do you what? Do you blame me? Do you blame me for what? Do you blame me for an action which Allah had written in my fate 40 years before my creation? <laughs> I will. Uh, I, will uh, I don't want to change the topic, but I will just give you give you, an uh, 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 like an example of how Christians uh, they copy paste too. Not only Muslims, Christian they copy paste. Like how many of you, when we talk about Muslim, you will see somebody Christian uh, quoting for you from the Bible about uh, the children of Ishmael, that they will be wild. What do Muslims have to do with the children of Ishmael? What What the Muslims have to do with the children of Ishmael? Where do you get this from? Eh, I heard it in the church. Did you ask your bishop where he, why he said that? No. Well, your bishop who told you that is an idiot. Because he have responsibility not to teach something is not true. More than 90% of the Muslims first are not Arab. And the 10% who is lost supposedly who speak Arabic, they are not Arab too. Because Arab is not an ethnic. Arab is a word meaning those who live in the desert. Arabia is a word mean desert. 
Correct your information, please. And don't copy this verse and post it when you speak about the Muslims because this is have nothing to do with them. Muhammad is not from Ishmael, the Arab not from Ishmael, and I'm an Arab. Ishmael, his mother is Egyptian, his father is Aramaic, his sons are Arab. The Arab exist before him, which are people who live in the desert, the Bedouin, as simple as that. Arabia is a word mean desert. As simple as that. So whoever live in the desert, if you live right now in Arizona, you are an Arab. <laughs> anyway, so don't mix things up. Muhammad have nothing to do with Ishmael. And when the Christians actually, they teach in their churches that Muhammad is from Ishmael, they are being literally giving a hand to Muhammad to convince some to believe that Muhammad have legitimate bloodline from Abraham. And this is the whole point of claiming that Muhammad from Ishmael. This is a very naive teaching of many Christians, sadly. Copy, paste, like Muslims. Now we go back here in the topic. So Adam saying to Moses, do you play me for an action I did, which is written for me? Which What does that mean? Because when he say, do you play me? It's mean you cannot play me, right? Is that correct? When I say, do you play me? It's mean you cannot blame me, but Moses are blaming him for what? Blaming him for turning us out of heaven. Correct? Is that correct? The Muslim Abdur, he said to us, Allah, he knew the future. This is not about Allah, he wrote your fate for you. Uh, hold on. <laughs> this is Adam. And this is Moses debating. Moses, he believed that Adam is the reason for us to be out of heaven. That means Moses is following the teaching of Christians. Obviously, Moses is not a Muslim because Muhammad himself, he got, he got himself busted. That means Moses, the prophet who died, and yet now he met with Adam after death. He still believed in the original sin like the Christians. So how you Muslim, you believe that Moses was a greater prophet and he was a Muslim if he believed in the original sin? This is mistake number one. Mistake number two. Am I heard, guys? Mistake number two. Do you blame me for an action Allah had written in my faith? Uh, let me change this to translation. You know, I mean, different hadith just to show you because they, they play with the translation to confuse you. Hmm? Look, read, read this one. This is the Muslim translation, not mine. This is, this is all a Muslim website. This is Sahih too. Look what it says here. This is more accurate. Do you blame me for doing a deed which Allah had decreed that I should do 40 years before he created me? Look at this disaster. According to Muhammad, Adam, he did what Allah forced him to do. Do you see it? Now, did Muhammad agree with Adam or agree with, Mu with Musa's? Guys, Muhammad agreed with who in this story you see in front of you? Can somebody tell me? Just to be sure that you guys are awake. Muhammad agreed with who? With Musa's opinion that Adam is the reason to go out of heaven? Or with Adam? Adam. Look at Muhammad continue saying. So Adam got the better of Musa's in argument. Actually, in Arabic, it says, so Adam, he confuted Moses. Adam, he repeated three times. So look at this. <coughs> Allah, he made a fate. He have a plan. And the plan is very simple. I will create someone, his name is Adam. His wife, her name is Eve. And then I will make him commit sin, and then I will kick him out for committing sin. <laughs> now, what does this have to do with salvation? Anyone can help me? What does this have to do with salvation? Let us let us uh, let us make it more clear. We need salvation because we commit sin against God. Correct? Why Adam was kicked out from heaven? Why he deserved death, and this is why he died. Sin, this is what the Bible says, sin to bring death. 
There's tons of verses, by the way, not one, not two, not three. There's tons of verses. And by the way, we can't complete and like uh, we can't compare the Quran and the Bible because the Quran is not even the index of the Bible. It's not even in the size of the index. This is how small the tiny the Quran is. The Muslim they make it in a big text to make it look bigger. But in fact, you can print the whole Quran in, in, in a few pages. So we need salvation because we commit sin. But if Adam himself he commits sin doing the order of Allah, so why Adam needs salvation? Do you understand me? And as long as Allah, he wrote everything, the destiny for even the infant and the man and the women and Adam, that's mean there is no salvation in Islam. Now, I have a big, 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 big uh, <coughs> explosion, explosion here in the Hadith. I will show you one which nobody can discuss ever again, this topic. Look at this hadith. And try not to laugh. Quran is the same size as a New Testament and the Torah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> A good one, Justice. Now, let us find this hadith. <coughs> uh, this one will destroy everything in this cult. Or let us say, we'll put the nail in the coffin. Look at this disaster. This is a very authentic hadith, and this is Sahih al Bukhari. Hadith number 7454. Muslim translation, not mine. Muhammad here speak talking about how Allah will create you, which is stupid, because Muhammad claimed that in 120 days you are finished, and for 40 days you are a congealed blood, which is very stupid. And you are a sperm who will became who will stay as a sperm for 40 days and then you will become a thick blood for 40 days and then you will become a flesh after that for 40 days and then bing bingo you are a baby now but this is not what my topic is about look at this Allah will write for you the angel is sent to him and then the angel he ordered to write four things he write what four things why Allah writing four things this is your fate his lifehood the date of his death and his deeds written by who by Allah okay and whether he will be like a good person or a bad person do you see it whether he will be this is not about Allah knowing because he's writing things <laughs> this is not about knowing the future no this is about the side in the future and how we can prove that read the hadith it's in front of you and then look at this Muhammad he said <clears throat> So one of you, this is after all I created you, since that, that you, your life is started now. So one of you may do the good deeds. Critical is like, you know, he, he do the character of, uh, of a good person, of the people of heaven. So much that there is nothing except a cupid between him and paradise. You're almost there. You're almost in the door of paradise. But then what has been written for him decided his behavior what like what 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 and then and start doing evil deeds cricket and size the people of uh, the character of the people of hellfire and then he go to hellfire like what the heck guys do you see it where is justice are you there justice justice do you want to play with my beard what is this? What is this? So Allah, he wrote, 
your future, not Allah, He knew the future, as you said, you liar. Allah, He wrote your future, and then what will take over is what Allah, He wrote. And now you are almost, you will enter the door of heaven, but Allah, He wrote for you, you will go to hell. That's it. So now, because Allah, He wrote for you that you will go to hell, even though you were doing the deeds of good people all your life, and then what Allah wrote for you. There is a cupid between you and heaven. You are like a like one meter. Like one meter between you and heaven. This is how close you are. And then what what has been written for him decides his behavior. Who decides your behavior? People are you listening? Who decides your behavior? What Allah wrote for you. And then he started doing the evil deed, which will make him go to hellfire. So how we can say there's salvation in Islam? Are you getting my point? Why I'm saying there's no salvation at all in Islam? Do you understand now why I'm saying? Because salvation is you doing something and then you are saved. But it's not you choose anything. It's already written there. And Allah, he decide. It's not you decide. It's not you decide what to do. You see this poor Muslim here, he was praying for Allah supposedly five times a day. Putting water in his nose, which is very disgusting, five times a day. Putting his finger in his ears because the devil he pissed in his in his ear, as Muhammad he says, five times a day. He hate the Christians, he wanna kill the Jews, he wanna do jihad, he shake his private part three times a day. Each time he go to the bathroom. He used the three rocks to clean his bum. Yet, after all of this in his life, what Allah he wrote for him will take over and will what? He will read carefully with me. And then what has been written for him decide his behavior. Who is the fool who want to convert to Islam? You let me know. You have to be officially a fool to convert in his, to Islam. Because you believe now because it doesn't matter a Christian prince he might go to heaven by the way because what Allah he wrote the Christian prince before he go to hell it might change everything <laughs> look at this and Muhammad did not stop here you see what I like about Muhammad he talked too much and when a fool he speak too much he do a lot of poo, -poo. actually he do nothing but poo, poo Muhammad is a poo, poo maker and now he is making big poo, -poo. So this guy now who was going to go to heaven, Allah, what wrote for him, changed his behavior and he started doing the act of people of hellfire and he go to hell. And then Muhammad continue. He cannot stop. Muhammad cannot, for the, for the sake of shin of Allah, Muhammad, can you stop talking? You expose us, man. You expose us. We Muslim, we, are, we, we got busted because of you. Shut up. And Muhammad, now take the other direction. And one of you may he do the devil deed. Look, look at this. What? I read the Quran. Uh, guys, look at this. Look, look, just to show you what the Muslims answer. Just to show you how Muslims, they try. Sad, very sad, very sad. Uh, Arabian prophet. Line, read Quran, chapter 18, verse 207. It clearly says, be believed, be good, and paradise promised. That's mean Muhammad is a liar. Thank you very much for posting this. Actually, I showed many verses already from the Quran contradicting whatever Muhammad is said. And the Quran contradicts itself. Because the Quran says, if Allah will, they will not be not believers. <laughs> if Allah will, it was Allah will. Stupidity. So you are saying to me that the Quran saying, if you do this, and Muhammad saying, if you do this, that means Muhammad is a liar because both of them is coming from Muhammad. He forgot that the one is talking there is Muhammad and now he is explaining to you the Quran and the funny he is saying I am a liar it's in the front of your eyes ah, I forgot you are blind so look here and now Muhammad continue and one of you may do evil deeds in the character of people of hellfire so much so that he is nothing except a cupid between him and hellfire. Look how evil he is. Then 
that has written for him decide his behavior who is the one who decide your behavior the one who will make you go to hell or to heaven any muslim can tell me who is the one who decide your behavior which make you go to heaven or to hell i want muslims to answer me Uh, I'm not mocking Islam, my friend. I'm mocking the devil. You call it Islam, I call it the devil. This is stupid teaching. And you don't like me to, to hear me while you are here. Go. Don't mock Islam. So you have a book. It's called The Christians, Pigs and Monkeys and Najis, Filthy, Dirty. We are equal to animals. Don't mock Islam. So you can mock us. We are laughing at the comedy of Muhammad. You don't like it? Go. Take a, take a hike. Take the first bus is going to heaven of Allah. Mrs. Molly Foley. The one who said, you don't mock Islam, Islam mock you. You are a female. Allah says beat women. If I convert to Islam right now, I can have four like you and beat you every day. Legally, officially. What kind of a cult is that? So you're afraid about mocking Islam, but you are not afraid of being spanked because Islam consider you a half a human being. Don't mock Islam, Islam, Islam mock itself. This is stupid. You answer me. I want an answer. Allah decide the behavior you will do by what he wrote for you. So why I will go to hell? Where is justice? Where is justice? He gave you an example of two individuals. One, he spent his life doing the good deeds of a Muslim, supposedly. Read carefully. One of you may do the good deeds, like in the character of people of paradise, so much that he, there is nothing except a cupid between him and paradise. That's mean he spent his life doing that. But then what has been written for him decide his behavior, and he start doing the deeds of evil people, and he go to hellfire. Where's justice? Anyone can tell me? Where's justice? Is that justice? So what? This is a game. This is a, this is a filthy game. The poor guy. He was doing. He is praying to Allah all his life. He go to Hajj. He spent all his money in the in the in the pocket of the Saudi. So he make them rich and he stay poor. A, a person who is from Indonesia, he make a hundred dollar a month. He spend his life saving money so to go Hajj and kiss a black stone <laughs> pagan cult. And then after all what he did, he go to hell. After all what he did, he will go to hell. And then what Allah, he wrote for him, decide his de his behavior. Who is deciding my behavior right now? According to Islam, Allah. So what salvation is about? There's no salvation in Islam. It's just a gambling machine. It's already written for you, written for me. The behavior which will make me go to hell or to heaven. Is that correct, guys? Is that isn't it? This is what the story is saying. This is what the story is saying. It's not you who decide your behavior, which might take you to heaven or take you to hell. It's Allah. So why I want to convert to Islam? Because if I convert or not, it's already Allah He decide for me where I will go. <laughs> Why I want to pray to Allah? <laughs> what a stupid cult. What a stupid cult. So yes, my friend, in Christianity, we have salvation with the Christ. And everything Christ, he said, is not only intelligence, it's super intelligence. And everything your prophet, he said, is super stupid. Live with it. I know I made you angry. Because I expose your prophet and I take off his panty. Everything is exposed about this cult. This is a stupid cult. It's a gambling machine. It's a casino. And you know what? Even in the casino, it's you who play. In this casino, there's only one player. His name is Allah. Allah. 
prove me wrong. So, as you see, with the Christ, we have salvation. With Muhammad, he have nothing but deception and stupidity. And don't forget that Allah in the Quran, he says he is the best of the deceiver. And that's why my book, my first book, it's called The Deception of Allah. He called himself a deceiver. And this is nothing but a deception. He says to us, if you became a Muslim, I will save you. And then we find it's not, there's nothing It's called save me. It is just a stupid cult. From the beginning to the end. And only the fool who believe in a fool. As simple as that. And sometimes I ask myself, I mean, how, how fool I am to believe in a fool like Muhammad. Because if a fool can fool me, I mean, how fool I am. You know what I mean? If a fool can fool me, how fool I am. How a fool like Muhammad can fool me. Promising me women who have, uh, you can see the bones, the marrow of their bones. I mean, this is that, this is proving that this is, this person is sick too. The promise of virgins and women, you can see the marrow of their bones. And this is a proof that this guy is a, is, is a sex maniac and he is a stupid too. Who in the world want to see women bones and he will enjoy it? You tell me. <laughs> this is sick. Who is a smart person he will enjoy having 80,000 child supposedly as servant of Muslims claim? 80, this is sick because this is a child abuse for 80,000 child. Literally. The good God will not accept that. Our Lord, the Messiah, he says, if you don't become like the little one, you will not enter the kingdom of my father. Muhammad is saying even children, they will go to hell. Trying to seduce us by sex and sexuality and eating hummus in paradise. He speak your belly and down. That is the devil. And you know, seeing a woman uh, in paradise in such a way, like you see the marrow of their bones. I don't know if you know if you know what I'm talking about. L let me show you my wife in heaven saying hello to you. Uh, this is my wife in heaven. She's saying she is saying hi. Okay, uh, look, she is happy because she is married to me. She's lucky person. I'm a Muslim. Yeah, I will see women. The marrow of their bones, and that's supposed to make it make her so sexy. Yes, because he is obsessed with the white color, white women. So they are so white to the point because you know, if a person is so white, you can see even the vein in under his skin, right? So Muhammad is exaggerating with his lies to the point of promising them that you will see the marrow of their bones, which will make the women not only scary. This is will be a horror movie. This is not a heaven. That is far away from any heaven to be even exist. And by the way, I, I hope nobody been uh, like uh, tempted by the picture of my wife. I know I, she is very beautiful. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not married, but I think this is, will be my future wife. Allah will designate this wife for me, brother. Yeah. Look how beautiful she is. Alhamdulillah. This is the gift of Allah for me, brother. Who can deny such a gift? Only kuffar, brother. So we join ISIS, Al Qaeda to get this. I get myself in a in a in a in a 
in, in a bus and explode myself to get this how fool I am how fool I am to be fooled by such a thing uh, I see somebody asking for her number come on please please show respect well, why you want to take the, the number of my wife you know she is not waving her hand for you she's waving her hand to me hello I mean come on you uh, you see what well, this is why the prophet he says we should make them wear burqa look at you I mean we cannot even leave you with my wife alone she cannot date 1,000 1, uh, people uh, listening all of them they want to take don't make your her picture as a background for your phone please like come on show respect okay I know it's your dream if you want to get someone like this convert to Islam that's it I mean what, what, what the problem just convert to Islam it's very easy 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 the promise of this man Muhammad prove that he is mentally ill too <laughs> what kind of a promise those promises are huh any Muslim can tell me like look at this oh boy oh man oh boy look at this your wife in heaven brother <sighs> okay I better stop it's not good for singles there's many singles here as you know look at this this is what we will get in heaven And you know, if you don't show the reference, they will say he's lying, brother. He's a liar. Actually, I'm showing the reference, and still they say he's a liar. It is in the front of us. And they say he's a liar. Women will be so beautiful, pure, and transparent. I want to have a transparent woman. To the point you can see in the marrow of the bones of their legs. And you will see through the bones and the flesh. Alhamdulillah. Very beautiful. So my friend, it's very obvious that Islam has no salvation. Islam is satanic cult trying to seduce you by women and sex. And you see, God, he created man and women. And nothing wrong with sex. God, he gave us a gift, many gifts in life, including having children. And this is the purpose, actually, of sexuality. God, he add desire in his design to man and women so they can enjoy even giving birth. So it's going to be a joy, or let us say, extra joy. Not only you will have a gift of God, which is a beautiful child, but you will have even a joy when you do so. Actually, when God, he gave us ability to have a children, he is giving us a replacement of what it is entire or let us say eternity we lost it in heaven so he give us a chance to continue because a man who will die and the woman will die so this is this is just a gift from god okay you broke my my command but i will give you and the children who will let you make after you a chance to come back to me and i will save you and this is why Jesus says, knock at my door and I will open for you. The one who drink my water will never go thirsty and will never die. Not the one who will see the marrow of the bones of the women. That has nothing to do with God. That is the devil. The devil, he seduced you by anything from the belly and down, from your, including your pocket. That is the tool of the devil. God is not a sandwich maker. Heaven of God is not a place of sandwiches and stupidity. My friend, God is good. Uh, CP, you have a special gift from God. 99% of Muslims do not speak English. Why don't you teach Arabic? even one time a month my friend <clears throat> maybe you do not know me i did teach in arabic for many many years i was to, i was doing it in a chat rooms and i you know i help a lot of people to understand islam so now we have a lot of fighters who speak arabic and they are doing great job but in english we don't have really you see i choose english actually 
which is hard for me not because you know, if I want to debate in Arabic, I do not need to read the translation, correct translation. They cannot lie about it. I mean, it's in Arabic. For both of us, we speak Arabic. But because nobody is able to do what I do in English, I am here. So it's not really about one, one a month or about twice a month. There is a lot of great people. They are doing great jobs. There's TV stations exposing Islam in Arabic. You know? So... Uh, maybe you do not know me for long, my friend, but I did a lot of work in Arabic. And it's very important to remember that those who speak Arabic, they have a great opportunity to learn. But those who don't speak, they can be deceived. Do you understand me, my friend? Those who speak Arabic, they have the text in front of them. You know? So all what you need to do is just somebody show them, uh, 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 you know, uh, like the, the truth. And there's a lot of people doing great job. Like there's a there's a there's a gentleman who's an ex-Muslim from Morocco. His name is Brother Rashid. He have a very very successful programs, and millions of Muslims are leaving Islam. Who those who speak Arabic? The person himself is a Moroccan person. All right. So I'm covering a part where nobody is covering. This is what I am doing. So there is many people they are doing a great job and look did you notice what happened since we start doing this in english i remember once i went in pal talk this is a muslim invite me there to debate them and then every day they have somebody converting to islam taking shahada in less than six months all those who converted to islam they left islam and not only that the admins of the chat rooms admin is the one the host they left Islam and they became Christians and they became admins in my chat rooms. Imagine. Why? Because they've been deceived. They don't speak Arabic. They lie to them. And actually, I they, I did make a, a course to teach Arabic for free. But sadly, nobody joined. Because Muslims, they do teach Arabic, and the purpose is to make you convert to Islam. It's an, it's an excuse to bring you on, so they will start talking about Muhammad. I have a, I have a channel, it's called Arab for Christ. I have my videos teaching Arabic there. We start, it says, hey, how many people are in the, uh, 20, 25? And then the 25 became 20, and the 20 became 15, and the 15 became 12, and then the 5, you know, they disappear because... You know, it's uh, maybe they don't they don't have passionate for it, right? So uh, I do everything I can. So heaven is really hell. I don't know what they mean, Scooter. <clears throat> No, in Christianity, heaven is heaven and hell is hell. In Islam, obviously, the one who is a, Muhammad is a person who is a, uh, suffering from flight of thoughts and he is not qualified to be a teacher for obviously he is a mentally ill person. And even the Islamic books confirm that to the point that Muhammad, the Muslims, they claim, you know, in the old days, when somebody, he suffered from mental illness, they say he is, uh, uh, you know, under the influence of magic. Magic. This is the only explanation they can come with. A person who, you know, is not like, he look normal, but he do things, stupid things sometimes or crazy stuff. So look what it says here. Aisha narrated that once what the prophet was bewitched, so he began to imagine that he had done a thing which in fact he had not done. Isn't it clear that Muhammad was suffering from mental illness? There's nothing, it's called magic. Like when the Bible speak about the magic of the Pharaoh, uh, the magician, and the, the stick of Moses, the stick of Moses was, was not magic. It was a miracle of God. But his magic overcome their magic, which means for them they thought this is a magic. But we don't believe in magic. There's no such a thing as called magic. And we have here reference saying from the Muslim books itself, which is very authentic, that Muhammad is mentally ill. How we can trust this guy he saw an angel if he imagined things? And why this is happening to him? And if you say to me that Muhammad was bewitched, that make it even more horrible because that means Muhammad is under the control of the devil. Because if a black magic, what you are talking about, 
is Muhammad being controlled by the devil? This is what the black magic is supposedly according to Islam. That's mean Muhammad is no prophet. And Muhammad he went so far with his uh, uh, mental illness to the point even his sex is fake. Look, read with me. The prophet continued for such and such a period of time, imagining that he had boom boom, but in fact he did not. This guy, even his sex is is fake. So how we can trust him that he saw an angel and an angel spoke to him? I remember when I was in the army, there is a person who was uh, released from the service because he hear voices. I asked him, "Where are you going?" You know, he was taking off his stuff and etc. He said, well, I hear voices and the doctor, they decide to let, let me go. And I said to myself, thank God they let him go because he might hear somebody, but there's nobody start shooting. <laughs> you know, he's a soldier. Very dangerous. He might hear voices, but there is nobody. He might see somebody, but there's nobody. You know what I mean? So they let him go. So Muhammad cannot work even in the post office because Muhammad he imagined that he delivered the letter but he did not. <laughs> what Muhammad is qualified for after we heard this? You know what I mean? So Muhammad obviously is suffering from kind of mental illness. And by the way, I'm not putting Muhammad down because he is suffering from mental illness, but I am fighting the devil because obviously he is taking advantage of his illness. He want, and then he start making verses. Any woman she want to give herself to me. And if the prophet his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her. So this guy, his madness is evil. It's not just an, a person who is sick. Like what this what this verse had to do with God? You tell me. A person, chapter thirty three, verse number fifty. Allah sent to Muhammad a verse saying, "All those are lawful for you to have boom boom with them." What what this have to do with God? And this is a privilege only for Muhammad. You believe it? God, the one who created these galaxies, the amazing words, is sitting in his uh, <laughs> table and writing. Privilege about the private part of the prophet Any women and look at the first translation that says any women she wished to marry herself to the to the prophet what Mary? it says to F him This is what it says This is a privilege only to you Privilege What this have to do with God? Isn't it obvious? Muhammad already have 13 wives and thousands of sex slaves. Why he need God to make a verse for him? Why he's single trying to find a date? What does that mean? What does it have to do with God? And then Muhammad, after he made this verse, women who they are not good looking, with my respect to everybody, they start offering themselves to Muhammad. So look, Muhammad, he made a solution. Women, they start coming. Because the reason women, they want to sleep with him, not because he's handsome. No, because they want security. The women who sleep with Muhammad, she will get a free food, a free accommodation for her lifetime. That's it. She is the girlfriend of the Prophet. So when women, they are not good looking, start coming. So he made a verse saying, Allah told me, I can turn any away of you, the one I don't like, and I can take away the one I like. This is God? Maybe the translation here is not too clear. Let me change translation for you to make it shorter. This guy, he had a lot of... Uh, Cushions between the words So you may differ or turn away any of them like what? Like what what? A second ago you says any woman she can offer herself But when old women they start offering themselves Muhammad he said this is not what I want Like what the heck? So he made a verse to say oh, you know what? <laughs> Allah told me I can differ any of you so Muhammad now is, is, is being selective and he always he used God to justify his evil. Do you see it? It's not him who want to sleep with your wife or your woman. No, no, no. Allah he won't. Allah said that. It's not my fault, my friend. All cult leaders in the world, 
they share two things they want to sleep with your women and they want to take your money and that's Muhammad and he make it like it's not him God said imagine imagine you are uh, claiming to be a priest and you say uh, God told me uh, I'm a prophet and uh, <clears throat> any women she can give herself to me and then women they start saying me 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 and they start looking like what this is 60 years old this is 70 years old this is not good looking this is her nose is uh, whatever uh, and then he made a verse says hey, but God just told me by the way I can differ any of you Muhammad he made a mistake he should add here beautiful women she can offer herself to the Prophet but he did not maybe dare to say it hmm? are you from Romania no I am not from Romania what make me from Romania? I went to Romania I went to many countries anyway so uh, I hope we did explain the the facts we have today and I hope people did learn and as you see, my friend, the truth will set you free. Always search the truth. And don't take what people say to you, including to me, for granted. Do your homework. And that's why I always show in the screen whatever I say. Not a single thing I said to you today did not show in the screen. And this is the case always in my videos. And I believe this is one million times better than showing my face. But Because what you would do with my face? This is a school, my friend. And this is a school which you, where you cannot find anywhere. First, it's for free. Secondly, it's in your home. You can be sitting in your table now or maybe laying down in your bed. And number three, you have all the reference right there. Anytime you can go back and you can take notes. Can we Christians celebrate Halloween? I mean, my friend, if you are a Christian, why you celebrate Halloween? Halloween is a pagan practice. This is a stupid tradition. I have nothing to do with us. This is not a Christian. This is stupid and disgusting, actually. Like somebody putting some uh, fabric in the front of his house. I mean, <laughs> people are weird. And, you know, companies, they make fun of you. They want to take your money anyway. So they encourage it. <laughs> why Why you want to celebrate Halloween? <laughs> my friend, if you want Halloween, I can send you my picture. You can have it in your house 24 hours, 7 days a week. You will see Halloween every day. You will not sleep. You will lose weight. And uh, no, no thieves will enter your house. What do you want more? And you take my picture with you in the elevator. Everybody inside will leave. Why you want Halloween? Isn't it enough to see the Halloween around you, around you in, the, in the earth every day? The disgusting world around us. Open the TV station and watch the news. This is Halloween. I mean, as if we are living in heaven and we need some like uh, something scary. Everything around us is scary. And you know you need Halloween. But a human being is, you know, it's silly. What you can say. Right? Spend your money in stupid things. Like, I remember I was in the Philippines, and there was a typhoon. 10,000 people get killed. And then, uh, uh, New Year celebration, hundreds of millions of dollars burn in air for firework. I mean, are you out of your mind? You are poor. You are burning your money. This is what stupidity is about. A human being is a stupid, my friend. And this is why Muhammad can be successful because if a person like this can be called a prophet and believed in by many, this is how a human being proving that he is a stupid. Smoking a cigarette, you are burning your health and burning your money and making someone rich, and you can you became poor. Drugs, gambling. Do you see the casino? How big it is? I mean, where is the money coming from? From your pocket, from the from the pocket of the fool. Human being is a stupid. And those are huge corporations, they are fighting over you to take your money. Muhammad wanna take your soul, the corporation, they wanna take your money. And you are the victim. So, my friend, we have to be smart. We have to be smart in everything we do in our life. Buy only things you need to buy. If you have extra money, my friend, give it to somebody poor. If you don't, if you have money, you do not know what to do with it, give it. There's people they are dying, my friend. 
with my own eyes I saw people sleeping inside the tire in the Philippines you know the tire in the cars they throw them in the side of the road I saw children sleeping inside the tire of the car because they don't have houses a human being is sometimes disgusting very disgusting selfish stupid and he abused himself and we are a Christian my friend we should not do that all those things are bad you have extra money instead of putting some toys in the front of your house which is stupid making your house like a graveyard give it to somebody he cannot afford to buy some medicine go the world is full of poor most of people are poor It's very sad to see such a thing happening, but I do my best, you know, and people have a choice. All right? If you have extra give, help the poor. Today I saw a woman, an old woman. I did not give her anything because she did not need the, but she's an old woman. She's a neighbor, actually. She is 80 something years old. And I came to her. I said, if you need anything, ask me. I'm like your son. And I, I, I feel sorry for saying that to her because she, you know, she said to me, I used to have a son like you and he died. I, I hurt her by, by saying that. But, you know, I, don't, I, I did not like really mean to, uh, to say that to her. Anyway, uh, let us, uh, let us move on. So, Salvation, my friend, is only by Christ, and Christ is beautiful. He's wise, he's amazing, and everything about him is truthful. You cannot compare any of the teaching of the word of the sentence of Christ and this garbage we see in front of us. It's an insult, actually, for me to compare. But I show people the differences so they can clean their eyes and they can be away from being blind. We have to be careful, we have to be smart, otherwise the devil is in every corner. And the devil can be many things. Many things. Things you might even think or you, it look do, good for you. Every Saturday, every Sunday, I hear people shooting each other in a night club. Why you go to night club? Why you are a fool? What, what you expect to see in night club? People of education, what you will learn there. People drinking, being drunk, and you know, people going there just to meet somebody, maybe to have sex, maybe. Why you want to go there? And then you complain because what will happen to you in a night club? You are going to a night club, my friend. So human beings have to be careful. Happiness is not in a night club. Happiness is not a party where people drink and go crazy. You will end in the wrong place. So when you put yourself in the wrong place, you are going to have a wrong end. Don't associate yourself with the drug dealers. Don't, if you see somebody taking drugs, tell him this is wrong. If he did not listen to the advice and he stopped, stay away from him, even if he is your brother from your family. Because he will not, you will not make a better person from him, but he will make a worse person of you. This person need help. Try to help him, but don't associate. We have to be careful, my friend. Anyway, I love you all, and I want to say thank you for all those who support us. As you see here, some people help. I appreciate your help, and I appreciate those who download the videos and share it and add subtitles, especially like from Indonesia. They are doing a great job, and what we are doing in Indonesia is really making a revolution. Uh, like a church is talking about what we are doing. Uh, 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 news agencies, a news website, you know, Muslims are going so upset because a lot of Muslims leave in Islam from Indonesia because of our videos. But I will tell you, if not those who translate my videos with subtitle from Indonesia, Indonesian, they will not be able to learn what we are saying here. So those people, they are doing a great job. Support them, help them. If you are Indonesian, subscribe to their channel and give them a hand. They need your help. You see, Christ, Christ himself is God. Yet he have a 12 disciple. And I hope you understand what I'm saying. Christ, who is our Lord, he have a 12 disciple. 
So we are, as a Christians, we are family. And we meant to be disciples, not to be individuals. Which means we are a church of God, and God is our Lord, and he is the head of the church. So all together we work as one body, and everyone he do his part. Do your part, my friend. Otherwise, time will come, and the Lord will say to you what you did. What you will say, I built a house. I bought a car. But I did not save one person to come to Christ. By making a video, posting a video, even if it's not yours, maybe you save the life of somebody without even knowing. How many people they leave Islam? I do not know them. Then I never heard of them. And I do not need to hear of them. For free, you took. For free, you give. And that is the Messiah. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again soon, I will try to come online tomorrow. If I can, I will and uh, subscribe tell your friends and don't forget to join our patreon where we update the link this link here will disappear for maybe an hour or so and then we will download it and share it in different link and then you can uh, uh, download it from uh, the updated link and i will post the updated link in patreon so for those who do not know where is patreon uh, you will see it in the screen in a second you can you do not need to make donation by the way in patreon to see the link this is not uh, what i'm asking you to do uh, but there is like where we update the link so you can see it always all right so we will update this link so you can download and share it salvation is not in islam when we prove it take notes take reference so if ever 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 you have an argument or debate with somebody claiming to be bringing salvation saying to you islam will save you we prove it to you today that there's no salvation in Islam. It's a joke. Islam is a flight of thoughts of a man who's proving to be crazy because none of his words match his own words. And that is a clear evidence that this person is suffering from mental illness. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Thank you.